In this video, I'll be doing a review of PC Linux OS, the KDE version from December 2013. I've opted for the mid-size 1.6 gig ISO version. I've had quite a lot of requests to review this distro, most of them from Andrew, so here you go mate, this is just for you. This is my first time reviewing PC Linux OS, and so I'm by no means any expert about it. So I'm pretty much fresh from using Debian and Ubuntu based distros, so this is quite a change for me. Now I'm sorry if I miss out some key features about this distro, but a couple of things I do know already. That it's a rolling release and it uses Red Hat package management, or RPM files. The distro itself seems perfectly easy to use. It wasn't really that difficult. However, before I got going with it, alarm bells really started ringing in my mind. I opted to download the torrent version of the file, as I try and do with some of these Linux distros, because it does save on server bandwidth. However, I placed this torrent on my Raspberry Pi and left it there for two days. Didn't have one single cedar on it. Hang on. This distro is in the top 10 on DistroWatch and it's been around a long time. Surely it should be quite popular. Hmm. That's really odd. Okay. Carrying on. I'm reviewing it in VirtualBox and I noticed the VirtualBox guest editions weren't quite right. I saw on boot up it did have all the drivers for like NVIDIA, AMD and VirtualBox sort of included and it would load whichever one was relevant up at boot up time. Okay, but the resolution wasn't quite right. So I wanted to look around and see how to get a better install of VirtualBox guest editions. I couldn't find anything. I saw one post from a poor guy who was talking to himself on a, on a community forum. How do I install VirtualBox Guest Editions? Oh, isn't anyone going to help me? Oh, okay, I did this and that, and he sort of got it going. This is weird. If I did the same thing for, I don't know, Ubuntu or Debian, I would find the result really quickly. Hmm, I don't think it didn't quite add up there. Anyway, I kind of got the drivers going, and they're not perfect, so it's a bit square in this, this, in this video. <laughs> That's all the res best resolution I could get. Anyway, let's take more of a look at it. So layout of this KDE desktop, so we have a couple of icons on the desktop. Got the application launcher on the bottom left hand side, and this is more the old fashioned style of KDE launcher. Got a shortcut to show desktop, then we've got shortcuts for configure your desktop, configure your computer, synaptic package manager, dolphin file manager, and a desktop switcher for two desktop screens. When you've got the applications open, it shows them in icon form. Kind of like how it does in Unity and Windows 7. On the bottom right hand side we've got the network configuration, clipboard manager, volume control, the list of last notifications, time and date and calendar. So one of the features included with this is this PC Linux OS control center that gives you a few shortcuts on various configurations. So we've got sharing, network services, configure DNS, go on. Okay, that's to configure it as DNS server. Yep, okay. If I was to use this as a server, maybe this would be quite a useful tool. The hardware, but I didn't see anything much about uh, drivers here, which is a bit disappointing. It seems to think the XOR configuration is broken, but whether that was something about whether, when I installed the VirtualBox guest editions, it could have an effect on it. Network sharing, configure Windows shares and NFS shares. Okay. Manage partitions on disk. Security, ah, setting up a firewall. I don't know why it's not letting me set up anything here, but maybe I've not installed it, I don't know. It's, it's very vague here. The installation of packages is all done through Synaptic. So, you know, Synaptic isn't the most user-friendly, but it is actually a very powerful tool. It's great for intermediate or advanced users, but not so good for anyone who's new to Linux. Not particularly many applications you can get, so it's only 11,000 packages. You know, I've seen other distros be as high as 20, 30, even 50,000. But really there's not much more I can mention about this distro. As I said, I'm not a huge expert on PC Linux OS, so let's just take a look through what the applications are that it has pre-installed. So configuration, you've got an ATI control center can't see the NVIDIA one here, maybe that's under a different menu, but it does have the NVIDIA and AMD ATI graphics drivers pre-installed, and it chooses them at boot up time. Archiving, that's a weird menu to see, okay. Archiving, so yeah, I'm not going to read all these out. You can see it's got K3B for the disk burner. 
Documentation. Help portal. Could have been useful, but I didn't notice this originally. Okay, let's try and open up something. Learn about our software manager. Go on in. Humor me. What do you have? Hmm. Okay. Some pretty pictures and a bit of an explanation about Synaptic. Okay, so you can find a bit of help here, but that's not a huge amount compared to what the whole system has to offer. Games, you've got quite a few games pre-installed. They're all sort of fairly basic two-dimensional games. So nothing too weighty there. Yeah, nothing too special. There's a couple of kids' games there. Okay. Graphics. Oh, wow, there's a stack under here, isn't there? So we've got GIMP pre-installed for the image editor. We've got Inkscape. Internet. Firefox for the web browser. Oh, we've got Skype pre-installed. Could be useful. Office. We've got the full suite of LibreOffice. That's version 4.1. Let's open up that, kind of break this up a little bit, and uh, we'll take a look at one of the applications. The opening times are actually pretty good, even for LibreOffice. This is quite a quick and responsive distro, and its boot up time isn't too bad either. Software Center, well, as I mentioned, your method of installing applications is through Synaptic. And Sound, you've got Clementine for the music player. This was intriguing, a great little radio player, and Jazz FM. Jazz me up. A bit stuttery initially, but okay, sounds all right. There's a few different radio stations there. These are nice things to have pre-installed. You can pretty much take this distro and use it straight out of the box. Video, so we've got Dragon Player and VLC for the video players. It does have the codex pre-installed. It's all nicely usable. So yeah, that's pretty much what we have here with PC Linux OS. Uh, here's what I thought of PC Linux OS, the KDE version. So yeah, it seems very quick and responsive, and it's pretty much usable out of the box. However, on the downside, there seems to be a lack of help articles and not much in the way of community support. I'm sorry if I'm slagging off the community there, but from what I was looking around, I didn't really see much in the way of support there. And it does seem quite a lot of applications on the 1.6 gig ISO. It's probably what you're paying for, really. What you're paying for, what you're downloading, really, however you want to term that. So overall, I've given this distro 70%. So thanks for watching. See you all later.